everybody welcome uh, to a special episode on the books and rose channel again again <laughs> and we are here at the jaipur lit fest this is day 2 and we are interviewing yan model <laughs> i have lost my voice or i would have screamed much louder <laughs> yes yes so not only do we have yan model but we also have richard, richard parker, parker. <laughs> of course oh yes 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 and because uh, he may not be real you may not be able to see it <laughs> yeah. that's a nice so, one just to set the tone <laughs> is this a, so we can't we can't really believe that this is real because we are such huge fans we are Thank huge you. fans and life of pi was one life of those changing. yeah cool. like I'm yeah it blew that. my mind to like a million pieces and i read it the year that it came out yeah 2000 and Two thousand and two, yeah, yeah. And, and I was very young, much younger than I am now, and it really, really changed my life. So I want to say, is this real, or are we going to try and one? Are we going to wonder if it happened, or we were just talking to ourselves the whole time? You know, I always let readers decide that. It's not for me to tell them. There's no wrong answer. Whatever you felt is the right answer for you. As you know, there's a choice of stories in there. There's a, a story with animals, a story without animals. It's not for me to decide how people are to read it, what they're to believe. It's up to them. So the only answer, the only right answer, is the one that you feel is right. Feelings is all that matters. Feelings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, welcome to India. Uh, I, th I think we should have started with that. But um, uh, not many people know, especially in India, not many people know that uh, this. You've visited this country far and wide, multiple number of times. especially for research etc and you've visited many uh, places of religious importance so uh, can you just tell us about some of the experiences that you've had in visiting the religious places any temples that have been memorable for you and if you're visiting any new ones in this current trip well um the first time i came to india was just backpacking in the north mm -hmm. and life up i wrote the second time i came to india when i backpacked in the south both times for about 6 months so it's a very intense way of backpacking you see a lot what's i find interesting in in hinduism is that key word called darshan um, mm -hmm. where you have to it's funny it's a very visual concept which you don't see in other religions where you have to see the murti and the the god has to see you have to see the god and the god has to see you mm -hmm. but to get to that and i remember in minakshi temple these enormous lineups on the outside of the temple complex you you eventually wind your way closer and closer and closer and closer and it's getting darker and moister and then you suddenly you have this vision mm -hmm. of this the god and the god sees you and just that dynamic is quite unique to wow. hinduism and this idea of perambulating around it afterwards and yeah. it's just an ex it's a it's a beautiful you know allegorical metaphorical just extraordinary way of trying to reach to a higher plane mm -hmm. so the minakshi one is one that i definitely remember i remember going in varanasi and seeing the ghats and the burning of the bodies and all that what i find interesting about hinduism is how it's still woven into the life of indians who are hindu i mean it wasn't the same thing but just specifically in terms of hindu indians yeah. how hindu is still very much woven into their lives yeah. have you ever looked at my poetry uh, as an inspiration for storytelling ever and i even write something uh, i'm considering writing something based in my poetry hindu or otherwise well absolutely in fact my next book is based on the trojan war oh wow uh, the trojan war the iliad by homer uh, the trojan war is largely a myth it's a foundational yeah. myth of yeah. the greek people but it yes. is a myth it's yeah. not a it's a tenuously hit, written down historical event it's mostly myth so absolutely see that's what i find interesting is you can take life very literally as just something material mm -hmm. but to me that's of limited interest ultimately what you want is what you make of life that subjective interpretation of life and once you start doing that you're immediately mythologizing life you're me immediately getting to the truth of life through the imagination and to me that's far more interesting than just a material chemical scientific not that i deny that i mean i i take my vaccines i love computers i love airplanes all this technology is wonderful yeah, yeah, yeah. but we're more than that yeah sure. and marvelous as technology is we are more than technology mm -hmm. and it's that more than that i find yeah. really interesting well this cool so are you going to be traveling through greek and like understanding the mythologies the histories well i've already been to troy okay. in western turkey okay. and last summer i went to greece okay. but mainly mostly that stuff is accessed through books through through okay. through yeah, books because it's well documented very well documented okay. and just one book the iliad and then there's more to be done but yeah i'm doing sort of academic more bookish oh. research have you read uh, madeline miller Um, yeah, I have. The uh, song of a song of Achilles. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So we just really love Circe. Yes, yeah. She's a superb job of reinterpreting Greek myths. Yeah, yeah, she has. Yes, yeah. So I read the one that I read was the song of Achilles. Yes, yes. Um you used the words darshan and murti while you were talking and we were your uh, the book uh, uh 
your latest book has Portuguese in it, and you were born in Spain, and you speak French and English. Mm -hmm. What other languages? Well, I was born in Spain, but of Canadian parents. They happened to be studying there, so I'm not at all Spanish. But my parents later on became foreign service officers, diplomats, and they lived in Mexico and Costa Rica, so I picked up Spanish too. But my mother tongue is French, but I always went to school in English, and I happened to learn Spanish reasonably well along the way. But essentially, I write in English. Because the English, you know, when I write in English, I don't write in English, I just write. And I forget that I'm writing in English. And only the odd time when I'm looking for a word or something like that do I realize, oh, uh, this is the material I'm using, the English language. Mm -hmm. But basically, I just, I just, I, my feeling is when I'm writing that I am just writing. I'm just expressing myself. And I forget language. What language do you think in? Well, when I speak French, I'm thinking in French. When I speak in English, in English. And in Spanish, in Spanish too, but that's a bit more difficult. Then I have to sort of translate in my mind sometimes. So uh, the other thing is that, I mean, coming back to also your conversation on religion and everything, uh, it's been well archived and documented in all your other interviews as well that, you know, you discovered religion by means of travel and discovery, right? Mm -hmm. And that's translated into your works as well. Um, it seems like you're always on this pil pilgrimage and you take your readers through a pilgrimage of sorts as well. Is this all a manifestation of a personal journey that you feel you are on as a person and then the readers are just, you know, bystanders also like, you know, discovering it along with you? Because a lot for a lot of young people, it's not so much about the religious fervor of worship, right? It's more about storytelling. And so do you think you're on that right path? I thought this was going to be a silly interview. <laughs> that's a very good question. God, if this is silly, what's the serious part going to be like? Uh, that's a terrific question. I think, um, first of all, when I, I come from a secular, temperate country. Yeah. And what India brought to me was gods and animals. When you live in Canada, there are no gods, no animals, basically. And when you there come are cougars. Yes, but you don't see them. You don't encounter them. There's no darshan with them. You know they're there, but there's no darshan with the cougar. When you come here, you see those. So what India brought to me was a very broad faith. I'm not denominational. I'm not a Hindu. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a Buddhist. It's just this broad trust that this all makes sense. Mm -hmm. And through my imagination called faith, I'll believe that it makes sense. So India brought me that idea that you can read reality in a different way. And so, yes, I'm on a journey in the sense we're all on a journey. You're all born one day and you'll die one day. And in between those two points, it is inevitably a journey. Mm -hmm. What I'm interested in is being self-aware of that journey, that it is a journey. And trying to understand it as much as possible. You can read it, you can live a very narrow life of believing only the factual, don't indulge in silly religion or in silly art, those are invented stories and that's nonsense. But what's the point? You, know, you might as well believe more. So long as it's not crazy and dangerous to yourself or to others, I'd rather believe more, 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 more than believe less, 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 less. So that is a journey and as a writer you're always on a journey, you're always exploring life and that's the witness of that is the books that you write. And hopefully readers come along with you. Um, and are themselves changed. I agree with you that books can change your life. Yeah. There's something tra life transforming about religion and art. They both seek to transform you. Um, and for that I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be on that journey. I have a silly question. Okay, you ask your silly question. <laughs> are you a Game of Thrones fan? I love it. Game love of Thrones it. is amazing. Great. Amazing. So amazing. now that uh, we have a question for you that I think only you can answer. Um, because you're uniquely positioned. So now that all the Martells are dead, <laughs> and Olena Martel is there. What do you think is going to happen to the line next season? You know what? <laughs> I haven't seen all of Game of Thrones, <gasps> so you just ruined oh it for God. me! <laughs> Shit. They're all uh, happy and living uh, in a cottage. Yeah, I haven't, but I missed the name that you said, so I don't, I don't know what I you know, said. No, 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 no. You know what? Because we binge watch, we binge watch it. So I have four children, so I can't watch television for hours on end. So when we watch Game of Thrones, we're like a couple seasons behind. <laughs> So we binge walk it for a couple of weeks, binge watch it. So I haven't got there yet. Thank you for nearly ruining it for me. I just ruined Game of Thrones for Young Martell. That didn't happen. No, no, that's that funny. That was just a feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's not but true. what I've seen so far, I've seen I think four of the seasons. We've loved it. But then we started having too many kids, so we've put it off until we can, you know. Yeah, it's not that's a good reason. Show. No, it's definitely it's not. not. Yeah. No, definitely not. There was the, the, when the new season, uh, the first episode came out, my friend saw it and then I had to call him to confirm that there are no sex scenes because I was watching it with my dad. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so I he's like, know. this is the most bizarre phone no conversation I've had. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we have to do a shipwreck question. Okay. So you're shipwrecked and you can take one book and one movie and do, let's not argue the logic, but one book and one movie, which one would you take? Well, a book, probably a manual on building ships. 
or building a boat. That's cheating. <laughs> One book. Um, probably an encyclopedia. Okay. Encyclopedia Britannica. Why? All 26 volumes. Because oh. that's one way of accessing the world. So I could be on my island but still accessing the world. And then probably a typewriter. Hopefully they'd throw in a typewriter with the Encyclopedia Britannica. Yes. And one movie. Hmm. That's a tough one. I don't know. That would be... Uh, maybe some Netflix series because that means it'll be really long. <laughs> There's a lot of cheating happening uh, here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe you'll catch up with Game of Thrones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe that's it. The last yeah. three seasons of Game but of Thrones. On my little island, so you're not going to ruin it for me. Everyone is happy. Nobody can ruin it for um, They're smiling. Their, their lives are wonderful. I don't know what, what I didn't say anything. So. I don't know what movie I'd watch. I've liked a lot of movies, so there's no one that's, there's no, there's no single favorite movie. Plus, there's so many different genres. You know, I like the Pink Panther when I was a kid. They're very funny. Am I going to watch the Pink Panther on my desert island over and over again? No. But do I want to watch some great, weighty, Oscar-winning movie over? I don't know. You know, in movies, you definitely want variety because they nourish you in a slightly lighter way, so you need many different meals. Okay, so you'll take your Netflix connection with you. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's what I'll do. That's fine. Yeah, that solves the problem. Then you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, we did, uh, you know, sort of come across the fact that you tried to encourage the Canadian Prime Minister, the former mm -hmm. Canadian Prime Minister, to read. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'll come up with a list of world leaders and if you could recommend one book that they should read to each one of them. Well, that's easy. That's an easy question, easy answer. The very first book that I sent, Stephen Harper. Yeah. Oh, so is there more to your yes, question? No, we, have, we have a list we have of, a list of, of Oh, leaders. I see. In a I'm different ask book. You, yeah. oh, okay, okay, go ahead. Personalize. Okay. No cheating. This no time. cheating. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, Narendra Modi, who is the Prime Minister. Yeah, of India, no. Well, him, the same book as Harper, called The Death of Ivan Illich, which explores how man comes to death to accept the suffering of life. So it's a very, very good for an Indian, Indian Prime Minister. Cool. Okay, Justin Trudeau. Hmm. Well, I'll give you an uh, Indian pleasing answer. I'd say for him, the Bhagavad Gita. Because wow. he's very open-minded, youthful, open, and sort of, but, he, but he's held to be someone lacking in gravitas, which is not true. He's done, doing an admirable job as prime minister. But something like that, the Bhagavad Gita, I think, would be a good one. That's pretty deep. Um, Donald Trump. A dictionary. <laughs> or Dr. Seuss. A Dr. Seuss. Oh my God, that's perfect. <laughs> he's, a, he's a toddler, so a Dr. Seuss book. Absolutely. Yeah, he could be the Grinch who stole everybody's Christmas. Yeah, actually. or green eggs and ham, something like that, something. Okay, uh, Kamala Harris. Ah. Hmm. Hopefully a future president in the United States. Kamala Harris, what would I give her? See, I don't know her much. Mm -hmm. I know who she is, obviously. But for her... Life of pie. No, no, that'd be self-advertising. For Kamala Harris... I would give her life of pie. <laughs> What would I give her? Well, something to really stimulate her. So something like 100 Years of Solitude, maybe. Wow, to really fantastic. connect her with the imaginative world, because she's going to have a very hard job. So something that really takes her somewhere else. Okay, uh, two more. Theresa May. Mm, a self-help book on to help her get a new job. <laughs> she'll, need, she'll need a new job soon. <laughs> Bless her. But. Okay, Angela Morgan. Oh, well, she's retiring soon. She's done a good job. So, I you know, an entertaining book. Maybe an Agatha Christie. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Grand fiction. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So, which brings us to who are your literary influences? Oh, all kinds. I mean, my favorite living writer is J.M. Coetzee, the okay. Nobel Prize winning from South Africa. It's extraordinary how much he does with so little. Yeah. He's such a restrained writer. He, he delivers so much. Other than that, you know what? The standard sort of... Anglo-American, late 19th century, early 20th century tradition. So the Thomas Hardys and the Charles Dickens and George, George Eliot, uh, all the way to the American writers of the beginning of the 20th century, you know, the Hemingways and all those. It's extraordinary what was done with the novel by those writers. They were so experimental. Some are conventional novels as we think of them now, but some are incredibly experimental. So that one, with, you know, other writers, uh, I like the Russians, you know, the Dostoevsky's and all those. There's a Norwegian writer I liked a lot named Knut Hamsun. Uh, some Japanese writers, Yukio Mishima. Okay. Um, some great Indian writers, you know, Salman Rushdie is a great Indian writer. When I traveled, one of the times I traveled through India, I read a lot of R.K. Narayan. Mm. Okay, I loved yeah, him. You yeah. know, there's a person who creates yeah. a fictitious town but really discusses the reality of India. That's what art can do. Uh, there's all kinds. I mean, I, you know what, when you're a writer, you want to be connected to story. And I'm not connected to a single writer. I don't have a 
a portrait of a particular writer on my desk. It's just I want to be connected to story, and many, many writers have helped me be connected to story. What is, what is your guilty pleasure book? Probably crime fiction, you know, because I, I, I'm a slow reader, and so crime fiction, I love crime fiction. I find them really interesting how they work and what they say about how precious life is, and I, I really like crime fiction. We have one last question. Uh, we did, uh, Wikipedia told us that you collaborated with uh, a musician for mm -hmm. an art piece. So you've uh, won the Grand Booker. Uh, your movies won an Oscar. Are you going to win a Grammy? <laughs> That was a musical piece. It wasn't a lyrical piece. It was a musical piece heard by very few people. I can't yes, see myself. Yeah. No, Omar, yeah. Omar Daniels. Look yes. him up. Omar Daniels. Uh, I like collaboration, but it's, it means what you're writing is only half or a part of something. What's nice about being a writer is you're everything. You're the director. You do the camera. You do the, the wardrobe, the makeup. You do everything. and You create a world like a god, and that's fun. Once you start collaborating, you're starting to do only a parcel piece. So I'm happy to collaborate occasionally. And it was fun working with Omar Daniels. He wrote the music and I wrote the words to these, um, they were sung. So it was a very classical form. It was lovely to do. Uh, I might do it again if it happens again. I doubt it will win a Grammy, though. <laughs> <laughs> we hope for the best. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you so, so much you so for doing My pleasure. Here. Everybody, please share this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave comments and tell us what you thought. And read. Everything. Read. Everything yeah. by Jan Martel. Not related to Olena.